Naruto Shinobi Striker Season 8 starts today, but this season is slightly different from what we're used to. For starters, there's no season pass, so DLC characters are still gonna come out, but you need to buy them individually. And they're doing some stuff they've never done before, I mean, they're creating a new rank for weapons, an SS Plus rank, because they believe what they're putting out is better than anything they had before, and they're also adding a new gameplay feature, which is using pets. Actual ninja animals that you can use in battle. So, before I jump into the game, I wanted to read what this is all about because they just put out a developer blog. And from what I know, a lot of this stuff is locked behind the gacha system, so chances are I'm gonna log into the game and I'm not gonna see half of it. So here it is, everything that Season 8 has to offer. If you're looking for a character review though, we'll be back tomorrow with a full look at Kawaki Karma Progression. And we're gonna start with a preview of Kawaki and then we're gonna talk about summoned animals, then the SS Plus items, new special ninja 2, balance adjustments, new item showcase, and then a closing message. By the way, this game is actually getting custom lobbies. Finally. I don't know when they're doing it, but they did mention that they were gonna do it. I hope they uh, have some more details here at the end of this blog. A new character joins the battle, Kawaki Karma Progression. Much like Boruto Karma Progression, they're doing a new Kawaki. I would complain about duplicate characters, but at this point we have so many that who cares? Plus, Boruto Karma Progression is one of the best DLC that we ever got. I mean, range types at the very least will agree with me. Hijon Shinobi Striker has an all-purpose attack type suitable for any scenario. Okay, attack type DLC to start things off. He uses Daikokuten to attack distant enemies and Sukuno Hikona to shrink himself in order to dodge and counter enemy attacks. Interesting, let's look at Daikokuten, his first jutsu here. Okay, we got a little melee combo. I don't know what that strong attack is. Isn't that just Halo Dance? Ah, huh? What just happened? Is Halo Dance a part of it? Okay, no, that's it. It's like you stare at him really hard, and then a cube falls from the sky. That thing seems fast. This Ninja 2 launches a miniaturized stake at your target. After a foe is hit by the stake, they will also be targeted by a follow-up attack using a giant boulder. I wouldn't call that a boulder. <laughs> I think that's a cube. Because the miniaturized stake is hard to see and moves at rapid speed, this Ninja 2 excels at long-distance surprise attacks. Dude, the speed of this is gonna make it so possible to combo with anything, and they know. I guess that is the whole reason why they included Halo Dance here. Halo Dance is super buff. This might actually be the first build that we try out. Look at that! It's guaranteed. Halo Dance is gonna disable subs, and then you just hit him with that. Depending on how damaging this is, this could be really good. Ninja 2 2, Sukuno Hikona, God Hunter. Let's take a look at it. We got a little melee combo once again. That's it, huh? Okay, so you activate it and like just dash towards him. And that's Flying Raijin level 2, just uh, as a suggestion combo. Oof. That movement is sick. To be honest, this kind of reminds me of the other Jutsu from the other Kawaki, which is Reverse Scale. Now that I think of it, the other Kawaki is also an attack type. Reminds me of Reverse Scale, but perhaps a little bit faster. Maybe it's not armored, maybe it also doesn't guard break. I mean, there's gotta be some balance, right? Leaving the left stick alone or pushing it forward while using this ninja tool will allow you to dodge attacks in a manner similar to a substitution? What? If you can use this jutsu while being attacked, then it's straight up a jutsu that you can use in combos and also as a bonus substitution. That's incredibly broken. I don't care how strong the attack is. There are currently some jutsu that give you a bonus way to combo break, but they usually are not very good offensively. It's like you're spending a jutsu slot just to combo break one more time. And I think that's a good balance to have. But this, this actually is an offensive jutsu. And if you can use it while getting hits, then we'll... <laughs> Busted. The rush attack has invincibility. Okay. <laughs> It's not even armor, it's just invincibility. Depending on how you choose to position yourself, you'll also be able to launch surprise attacks against enemies above or below you, so vertical tracking too. Shush. Secret technique, karma progression, let's take a look at it. Oh, it's an install super. Uh-huh, what are we doing? What? I don't know what I just saw. It enhances your physical strength. Okay, so you can attack better. You'll remain in the shrunken form granted by Sukuno Hikona for the duration of the secret technique, allowing you to nullify most long-range attacks apart from secret techniques and visual jutsu. I didn't see him being shrunk. He's not shrunk at all. 
It just has Suk no Hikona active. No, okay, I see the ray in his eye, the yellow ray. Your strong attack will change to drop giant boulders as used in the Daikoken. Okay, multiple strong attack inputs will also allow you to launch fireballs. So that wasn't even the jutsu. This guy has the uh, lightning jutsu equipped, almost for sure. But that's the strong attack there. He just does strong attack and, and the boulder falls. And then if you do many strong attacks, you do the fireball. I don't know what this follow-up is, though. Oh, fireballs to make your phones flinch before following up with an attack from scientific ninja tools. Okay, so that, that's what that is. It's a follow-up to the fireball. Interesting. It changes your melee combos, your attack buttons. Okay. Full review on this character coming out tomorrow, but for now, I definitely want to look at what else this update is bringing, because Season 8 is full of surprises. The biggest one is probably this one. Here is the first look at the Ninja Hound. Okay, you just put your hand down to summon him. That, that's an animation that's already in the game. This guy moves fast. Oh my god, hella fast. Now, is this a Jutsu? Does this go on the Jutsu slot? Is it, is it a Ninja Tool? I'm not entirely sure. Is it a new thing? Like, do you just have Jutsu Ninja Tools plus a pet? Does that mean everyone has pets now? The Ninja Hound will retreat if it's hit with an attack while running, making it hard to rely on them to escape a tricky situation. Interesting. A single hit and they're gone. Ninja Masters also possess a special technique called Body Activation that is similar to Summoned Animals. Okay. What's that? Okay. It just activated. There was no animation, so that's cool. You can do it while doing some other actions. Body Activation grants an increased movement speed effect, allowing the user to move rapidly around the map. It does? <laughs> I didn't notice that at all. <laughs> He's running. Uh, yeah, slightly, I guess. If the jumping power is actually buffed, like the speed scroll, then yeah, th this is probably good. In addition, summoned animals will be added to the scroll appraiser lineup, giving you the chance to get a rare ninja hound. Summoned animals from the scroll appraisal might also debut with various special effects. Look at the amount of pets already. Healer Ninja Hounds, Supplier Ninja Hounds, Attacker Ninja Hounds. Okay, and they're, they're all going to be different. There are no class restrictions on this one at the very least. You can see that all class types are right there. I wonder if everyone's getting a pet or if you actually have to go into the scrolls and hope to get one. Even if it's not a super rare one, like can you get one? We'll be releasing an article at a later date with more information on Ninja Hounds obtainable from Skull Appraisal along with additional details on how to use Ninja Hounds, so please check it out then. Alright, I will probably have my hands full with the character, so even if I get a Ninja Hound, I probably won't have the time to fully look at it. That might be a separate video in the future, we'll see. SS Plus items have arrived. Now, starting from this update, there's a new rarity SS Plus items. They are designed around the idea of being weapons even more unique than SS items. So we've been working hard at challenging ourselves to come up with new animations that properly reflect the source material. Interesting. Following that train of thought, while an SS Plus item is equipped, so any SS Plus item, your character will strike a brand new pose when they're deploying on missions and when they win in survival exercises. Ah, new victory pose. Nice. Oh, that's cool. No, that's super clever. Yeah, custom intros, custom outros. That's something that most games do. It's an aesthetic thing, so like it doesn't really bother anyone and any of the players thinking, oh, it's pay to win. No, it's just cosmetic. It does seem tied to a weapon, which is something gameplay specific. So yeah, you have pay to win arguments there. We'll also be unveiling three new SS items. You mean SS Plus? <laughs> you already forgot what they're called, bruh. <laughs> Attack type Claw Edge Kurama, Kunai styled after the 7th Okage Naruto Uzumaki and the Tail Beast sealed within Kurama. When using normal attacks, the Shadow Clone Jutsu and Rasengan are included in your combos, and when using strong attacks, you'll create Kurama Link Mode. What? Okay, that's the light attack combo. There's the Rasengan, as promised. And this has got to be the strong attacks. Oh my god! That's so flashy! This is such a cool idea, man. For ages, we've been saying that we want different movesets. And this isn't just, well, it's like that weapon, but has a different strong attack. No, this is like brand new. Range type weapon, Inferno Sword Flame Control. That's clever. That's so clever. Oh, with the Amaterasu mid combo, the Susano armor. Oh my god. I want to main range types again. And heal type is the sealed Totsuka blade, so Itachi stuff. Oh, that's why we saw the Itachi uh, victory pose, because they probably had this one. The crows, the Susano armor again. Bro, this is a crazy combo for a heal type. All right, defense types getting shafted here. <laughs> Just nothing for defense types. Sorry. 
actually insane stuff. Wow, they, 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 these weapons deserve the, the classification of SS+. Plus. Yes, they are much more special than the previous ones. New Special Ninja 2 are here. So, as mentioned in the previous developer's letter, the theme for New Special Ninja 2 is Awakened Tailed Beast. Now, if you remember, during the last two seasons, we had these bonus Ninja 2 that you could buy separately that were inspired in the previous Kage. I think some of them were fine, but, you know, not, not a big deal here. I think those were definitely too expensive for what they were. But they're doing it again, and now the theme is Awakened Tail Beast. And I think they're gonna start with a Two Tails Jutsu. It's, uh, again, for attack types. Attack types just eating at the start of Season 8. Okay. That's the Rock Lee Jutsu, and... <laughs> You just press the button, and you teleport to them from the sky. Alright, that seems very strong. The Ninja 2 transforms the user into the two tails and blows away surrounding enemies before raining down bomb blasts from above the target. That was not bomb blasts, that was the whole tail beast. Now this Ninja 2 is scheduled for release sometime after the next update, so it's not coming out today. I'm gonna say it's next month if they keep doing what they did last time, which was release a character in one month, release a bonus jutsu the following month. If they are still on this monthly pattern, I think it's very good for the life of this game for sure. Balance adjustments. They're not giving us full patch notes just yet, but I, I guess you could look at those in-game. But what I'm reading here about the attack ultimate, the lightning-style chakra mode, is very interesting. Now, that's an ultimate that no one uses. I, I, let's be honest, it's kind of pointless. In order to make it stand out from other secret techniques and similar effects, we've adjusted it so that the power of the user's lightning style ninja 2 and ninja tools are greatly increased. Basically, when you use this ultimate, if you have a lightning ninja 2 like lightning blade, lightning style lariat, piercing one fingered thrust of hell, and lightning style shadow clone jutsu, the power increase is close to 100%. Double the damage! they dealt before. This also applies to lightning ninja tools, by the way. So yeah, that does make it more unique, that's a great idea. Summoning Snake, greatly reduced cooldown times, lower the Summoning Beast's HP a bit to balance it out. Okay, so you can just summon it more often. Other changes include allowing users to use C2 Dragon in mid-air, that's a big one. Expanding the radius of Palm Sage Jutsu, okay, and 6 paths Chakra Rebirth, nice. So just the range, not the amount it's healed, because healing really got nuked last patch. So it's still healing the same amount, but a bit more consistent because you got more range. New item showcase! Here we'll introduce some of the items that will make their debut in the new scroll appraisal. The newly added items are different from the current scientific ninja tools and are weapons styled after the characters from the original series and cover art. Okay, so fourth Raikage's gauntlet. Okay, new moveset. That ground pound is cool. That lightning punch is awesome. Oh, the grab too? Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna break in lag for sure. <laughs> Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. Wow. It has a little bit of a setup, but uh, you're a range type. Just hang back and do it. Double Moon Sword for heal types? <laughs> you got foo foo foo? It's not just defense types anymore. Sheesh. Okay, heal types are getting some really good weapons. Are defense types getting shafted again? Wrench type Tenten Scroll. <gasps> oh, no video? Just a screenshot. Man. You can launch countless weapons from the scroll. Let me see it! In closing, they don't talk about the custom lobbies. But I'll show you what they said exactly, in case you haven't read the last developer blog, which I didn't cover. So, if I'm your source for anime game news, I guess you didn't see it. And that's my bad. But yeah, so on this developer blog, right at the end here... We are also considering ideas that will allow our shinobi to have more fun with the game, including a system to allow them to match with each other more freely. That's private lobbies. And I hope they remember to include spectator slots. Listen to me! Listen to me, Soleil! I, I, I get that you want one team to find another team, okay? There's four players. You want them to find each other, but... Where am I? I need to be here watching the two teams fight so I can live stream it and have tournaments and stuff like that. Please don't forget about spectators. Onegai shimas. That's gonna do it for today, but check back tomorrow to look at the new Kawaki Karma Progression character coming to Shinobi Striker. And last time I actually partnered up with a couple of pro players to give you the best builds for each class type in 2024. Check out the video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!